Hello, I'm Jack Drury. Hi, I'm Sergio Alvarez. And we are back looking at Axiom Digital PSM. And this system has a ton of new and exciting features, lots of menus to dive into. But yeah. before we do that, let's have a little look at the hardware yeah. and the components that make up this system. So okay. Sergio, take us through the system in terms of like the RF, um, I guess, workflow, the RF signal Absolutely. chain. Absolutely. So I'll, I'll start at the beginning uh, with our transmitters. So uh, we have two transmitters. We have, a for, for the first time, a quad transmitter and a dual. Uh, and uh, they both come in either the AC or DC variant, right? A DC module is available uh, for uh, redundancy purposes. The transmitters themselves, I have described this as everything you love about Axiom Digital in an IM system. <laughs> How close am I to that reality? Uh, pretty close. So um, the IO on the back is pretty uh, simple, actually. So, uh, you know, starting from the the right, so you have your BNC ports, right? Mm -hmm. uh, one port for radio, and then um, you have your uh, combo XLR quarter inch jacks, uh, eight jacks on the quad and four jacks on the dual. Mm -hmm. um, they can switch between analog or AS3 um, with a switch on the back. Um, and then you have a four port network switch, just like your Axiom digital microphone receivers. Um, and then you have your power section, which uh, is uh, AC with an AC pass through or with the DC module that AC pass through, it would be a, a DC mm -hmm. input. And these units will also support Dante, right? Correct, correct. So we have Dante, we have AES67, um, we have AES3. So those, it's a variety of different digital audio inputs. See what I mean? Everything you like about Axiom Digital in an IM system, yeah. all of the same stuff, it's great. So you can daisy chain the power. The four port ethernet switch, that's PoE on the left still. Correct, correct. Dante and correct. redundant Dante on the right. Right, so you can provide power to your uh, 8610 uh, wireless access points. Talk to me about combiners. Yeah, so we actually have two uh, combiners. And just to, to start out, with Axiom Digital PSM, you are gonna need new combiners. You can't use our existing combiners. Uh, the reason for that is uh, our previous combiners were active combiners, right, which kind of work um, to boost the signal to kind of unity gain. We're moving to a, a passive uh, design where um, the combiners can actually talk backwards to the transmitters uh, to understand if there's uh, more power that the transmitter can give to compensate for passive signal loss. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, our two combiners is uh, first is our eight port uh, antenna combiner um, and what's unique about this combiner is that it offers two modes right it, it's a it can serve as a more traditional eight to one uh, combiner uh, but there's also two times four to one mode uh, which is really meant for um, spatial diversity right um, you can have uh, up to 16 channels with spatial diversity connected to an eight rack um, a, an eight port combiner so other use cases for the two times four to one is really just spreading out your channels across more antennas, right? Um, we've kind of, one of the new things about Axiom Digital PSM is that uh, intermodulation isn't as much of a problem mm. compared to analog FM. So if you wanted to have four signals come out of a four to one and four channels come out to another four to one, that's totally okay. Because mm. more antennas in this context is better. We've right, because you, yeah, you don't have, you don't experience as much passive signal loss. Um, you can get some of that RF output power back by spreading out mm -hmm. um, across additional antennas. But so, it's totally up to you. Cool, so just to recap some of that very quickly, mm -hmm. you can run this in the similar way to you always used to. So eight channels going in, one antenna. You can take advantage of the spatial diversity feature, which is excellent and get much more coverage of your stage mm -hmm. by using the two times four modes yeah. and then connecting two antennas. Correct. And then if you add W mass into that equation, your channel count goes up through right, your combiner. Right. And, and that's, this combiner's taking advantage of the spectral efficiency of, of W mass and our four channel wideband carriers. So this is a passive combiner. You mentioned that it will have signal loss because yeah. it is a passive combiner. Right. There's mitigation built into this system. Right, uh, depending on how you're operating, um, the uh, transmitters will essentially have some amount of horsepower left to compensate for passive signal loss. Um, but within the transmitters itself, it, it'll kind of give you an idea of how much total passive signal loss there might be. Okay, and then the transmitter, mm -hmm. so the actual transmitting device will give more RF to the combiner in order to compensate. Yeah, it'll give you as much as it can. And how is that communication handled? How do the two talk to each other? Uh, backwards via the coax connection. So it's not the network? No. Nope. It's not some kind of weird witchcraft? No. It's just the BNC connection says, Correct. I'm losing energy. Yeah. And the transmitter says, 
I got give you. me more. Fantastic. Yeah. If you only need to connect two systems, we have a smaller uh, two to one combiner. Um, this could also be used as a splitter. New antennas for this system? What are we? No, you use just the same uh, available RF accessories that you normally use. So uh, no special requirements in terms of, of antennas. Excellent. So your old helical will work. Your old fin will work. Your old yeah. Omni will yeah, work. It's totally up to you to use the right antenna for your use case. Fantastic. The next item would be the body pack receiver. Um, so this is a true digital diversity body pack receiver um, with Showlink. Right, which is uh, compatible with the existing AD610. Uh, and so that allows you to remote monitor and control uh, whatever parameters exist on this body pack. Um, other cool things about this body pack is um, we have a hybrid uh, polymer metal design. Uh, so it is uh, lighter um, and also it is uh, more comfortable on the body. It doesn't get as hot. Um, or even in cold environments, right? A cold metal body pack can sometimes be uncomfortable. Um, and then uh, there's a advanced headphone jack design that's made to be more durable uh, with a threaded earphone connection. Um, the idea is, you know, we're hoping third party earphone manufacturers will make, you know, threaded connector cables a lot more readily available. Um, and so that adds, not only adds more durability and protection against sweat, um, but it also prevents, you know, from accidental breaks. Um, so another cool thing about this body pack um, is that we uh, redesigned the, the volume knob to be more resistant, right? You know, the notches feel uh, a lot more distinct. Um, and also uh, the volume control um, is a lot more accurate as well. It uses the SB910 rechargeable battery. It's the same battery that's used on our ADX1 uh, microphone body pack, right? Mm -hmm. So we're not introducing any new battery type. Uh, and uh, it come, like, like any of our Showlink portable devices, it ships with two rechargeable batteries in the box. And your rechargeable options for that, we've got the drop-in charger here. Right. And I guess you can use the existing rack charger. Correct, correct. We have a very popular uh, Sure battery rack charger. Um, so you can continue to use those rack chargers with the SB910 module. Um, there's a two port uh, switch, so you could uh, daisy chain them if you need to. Mm -hmm. There's four bays in the same amount of space as our previous two bay docking chargers. Um, they support both the SB910 uh, and the uh, ADXR itself. And, um, uh, and one power supply can support up to two of these chargers. Fantastic. Awesome. So transmitters, combiners, receivers, show link, charging, lots of options new workflows, new things to get used to. We're going to get into the next set of videos and we're going to look at some of the operational presets. So actually how you build this system up, how you go through the menus to set things like spatial diversity and WMAS as you would want them. And then we're going to look a little bit more at Showlink and some of the cool stuff that you can do. So join us on those two videos. We hope this one's been useful and we'll see you on the next one.